Michael, I'm going to tell you something odd about myself. Uh, my doctorate's in neuroscience, so I had a biological background. But my life's interest has been in the philosophy of cosmology, the philosophy of mind, and the philosophy of religion. I've not really taken an interest in the philosophy of biology, which has been one of your specialties. You've helped create this field. Uh, tell me what I'm missing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just philosophy of biology, is it? It's mm. philosophy of science. Okay. And the, the simple fact of the matter is science and technology have such a huge role in our world today. And I, as a philosopher, turned, shall we say, mm. almost naturally to this. And, there's been a long tradition. I mean, Aristotle was a biologist. Uh, Descartes was a great mathematician. Leibniz, too. So it, it's not that I'm doing something strange. Now, turning to biology, uh, as I did in the 1960s, was a little more strange because there wasn't very much philosophy of biology. And that which there was wasn't very good. In other words, ideal dissertation topic. <laughs> ideal. Uh, but I think there was a good reason why I and a couple of others, David Hull, for instance, did. It's because because biology, by the 1960s, was on that upsurge yeah. uh, away from being the poor sister of the physical sciences, and it was on its way to being as important as it is today. The DNA model had come out in in uh, 53. Uh, evolutionary biology was now moving forward with mm -hmm. people like Bill Hamilton writing about kin selection and ideas like mm -hmm. this. Uh, Evo Devo was just around the corner. So I think it was almost, what shall we say, fated uh, that a, 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 let us say, bright in the sense of eager young <laughs> philosopher of science like myself looking for a dissertation topic would turn to biology. I'd never done any biology because, as I say, in the 50s, biology was not high status. But, you know, by the time I got on board by the late 60s, it was on the way up. So characterize the field for me. If you had to divide it into three parts or five, what, what, what is the natural divisions of philosophy of biology? Well, I, I, I always incline to three parts, you know, omnia gallia et divisia and tres partes. I mean, uh, but... Uh, I think there are really two, actually, two big divisions. What one might call philosophy of biology, and what I've heard called by the, I think, the rather ugly name of biophilosophy, but I prefer <laughs> philosophy of nature. One way of doing philosophy of biology, and the way that I started, and the way that I think most philosophers of biology do today, is you're a kind of upper level biologist. You're a kind of metabiologist. The, the biologist looks, let's say, classification, looks at different mm. organisms and the sees differences and tries to work out what the differences are and then relates this to evolution and so on. The philosopher of biology looking at this would say, what kind of criteria does mm -hmm. the scientist use mm -hmm. when he, okay. why, for instance, does one separate out bonobos from humans mm -hmm. and thinks that fundamental in your classification in a way you would not separate out males from females? Mm -hmm. I mean, the difference between men and women are at least as big <laughs> as the differences between humans and bonobos, and yet one rather than the other. So the philosopher of biology is asking, I think, important and intelligent questions. It, it's, not a, it's not doing science. It's right, doing right. kind of meta-science, right. looking at it. So that's the one way. And that's the, certainly the way that most do it. It's the way that I did it uh, for the first 10 or more years. I, I started a journal, Biology and Philosophy, and that's what almost all the contributions are about. The other way, uh, let's call, I call it philosophy of nature, but it, it's a, that's a little broader than biology, is taking the science, biology in my case, and applying it to philosophy and saying, does the biology throw light for instance, if you were a theologian, to what extent does evolutionary biology conflict with uh, the, you know, the, the Apostles' Creed? Right. I mean, that would be, that I would see being doing bio, whatever you, or philosophy of nature. Uh, that would be theology of nature. But right. So for me, philosophy of nature is taking biology and saying, what about epistemology? What about ethics? What about some of these sorts of issues? Can we find insights, let's say, in the fact that you, Robert, are mo a modified monkey, if I might say so. <laughs> Very nice one, but a <laughs> but never, monkey nevertheless, rather than modified mud. <laughs> what, you know, given this, to what extent then 
is the <clears throat> fact that one assumes that when you, you know, you find yourself in a moral situation or something like that, an appeal comes out from Planned Parenthood, <laughs> you say, yeah, I'm not a pregnant mother, <laughs> but I believe in Planned Parenthood. <laughs> you know, here's my hundred dollars. Of course, you're in, in, <laughs> you're in television, my thousand dollars. I'm just a professor. <laughs> but so in other words, I'm interested in saying, the fact that we are modified monkeys, what does this mean for our moral sense or something like that? So let me explore each of these two. Uh, in the first category in which you're applying philosophy as this meta vision and examining the process of biology, you mentioned various things that they all seem demarcation oriented. How do you divide this from that? What, what are some of the other questions that would be in this meta approach other than demarcation questions, mm -hmm. which, which seem... Uh, uh, important, but of an older kind of uh, science. Well, the, the best of all is, is evolutionary theory. Why the hell should we accept a story about about dinosaurs and these sorts of things when we never ever see them? Mm -hmm. Why is it reasonable to believe okay. that we are modified monkeys rather than modified so mud? So the deep philosophy of, of, of what, what are your assumptions and what are the Absolutely. philosophical... And, of course and that's you, really worth exploring. Right, and you're right back into the fundamental questions that have occupied philosophers, say, like Anna McMullen, for long. I mean, realism, to what extent can we explain what we see here in terms of unseen entities? So, yeah. as I say, I think a lot of philosophy of biology is, is distinctive in being about biology, but it it's at heart, it's philosophy of science. Mm -hmm. And, you know, frankly, that's a very good thing because I think too long there's been the assumption, I mean, Kant said there will never be a Newton of the blade of grass. <laughs> too long there's been an assumption that, you know, they're foggy-minded old <laughs> whatever. You know, if you go into biology, it's because you can't handle the math or you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that what we're seeing now is that biology is just as tough-minded as any other science, <laughs> but it also demands tough-minded philosophy. Yeah, well, that, that's very good. Uh, in the second category, where biology is now being applied to other kinds of things, th that sounds broad because philosophy of mind, for example, which is a massive field, or philosophy of religion, two things I'm very interested in, uh, there's a great impact of <coughs> biology on both of them. Um, and so how do you then demarcate between the philosophical fields? Um, the way you've defined your second category of, of philosophy of biology, you're, you're subsuming a lot of other fields that a lot of philosophers spend their whole lives on. Yes, but the point is, Robert, you forget I'm a philosopher. Yeah. I'm a philosopher first. So you say, how do I demarcate? This has been done for me. I mean, you know, I'm part of the legacy of philosophy. So mm -hmm. issues like the starry heavens above and the moral law within, as Kant said, <laughs> are, are, are demarcated for me. Mm -hmm. So this is why I, I'm so interested in picking up issues. You, you mentioned the mind. Uh, one of the things I'm particularly interested in at the moment is to what extent does evolution throw views on philosophies of mind? I mean, uh, Clifford, William Kingdom Clifford said, if you're an evolutionist, you ought to be a panpsychist. Oh, wow. You ought to think that at some level, even the molecules have mind at some level. Now, here's a good question. I mean, this is a philosophical question. What is the nature of mind? But of course, you're bringing biology. Is evolutionary theory in any sense relevant? as Clifford said, or is it totally irrelevant, as, for instance, Thomas Nagel said in Mind and Cosmos? Yes, right. So you can't get deeper or more exciting philosophical questions than these.